Hi everyone, my name is Shada, and I'm going to be presenting on age at menopause and women living with and without HIV in two Canadian cohort studies. To start, I'd like to acknowledge that uh, this research was conducted on the traditional ancestral and unceded lands and waters of the Coast Salish peoples, including the Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh, and Musqueam nations. I'd also like to note that throughout this presentation, I'll use the term women to describe people who are sex assigned female at birth and who identify as women, but I do acknowledge that not all people who menstruate or have ovaries identify as women and that their experiences might not be captured in our data. So to start, uh, previous studies have reported that about 35% of women living with HIV will experience early menopause, and that typically women living with HIV go through menopause around the age 47 to 50, which is younger than the population average of 50.5. However, most of our available data is based on self-report. And in those studies, early menopause has been associated with using intravenous drugs, smoking, having earlier start to the periods uh, or early menarche, as well as having hepatitis C. And we care about early menopause because it's associated with bothersome vasomotor symptoms like hot flashes and night sweats, as well as vaginal dryness. And these are all symptoms of estrogen deficiency. It's also associated with comorbidities like poor bone density, fractures, uh, cardiovascular outcomes, as well as it can bring up some important conversations about family planning that can be emotionally traumatic for women. However, it's challenging to define whether or not a woman has gone through menopause. And that's because we define menopause as no periods for at least 12 months, not due to other factors. But there's many reasons why someone's periods might stop for a prolonged period of time, including hormone imbalances, structural causes, cancer, chemotherapy. And commonly in women living with HIV in Canada, it's because of something called hypothalamic amenorrhea or no periods because of a low body weight, stress, or commonly substance use. And we can distinguish hypothalamic amenorrhea from menopause using follicle stimulating hormone levels. And so to explain why, I'll walk us through the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis. So this starts in the brain where the hypothalamus releases GnRH, which travels to the pituitary. The pituitary then releases uh, the hormones FSH and LH that tell the ovary to start making estrogen and progesterone. Estrogen and progesterone then feed back to the brain to tell it that it doesn't need to make as many of these hormones anymore. In menopause, we have a uh, low estrogen and progesterone, so it's no longer being produced in high levels by the ovary. So negative feedback is lost and FSH levels go up. So menopause is associated with high FSH. In hypothalamic amenorrhea, it starts in the brain because, as I mentioned, it's a hypothalamic condition. So there's low GnRH and hence low FSH and low estrogen. So hypothalamic amenorrhea is associated with low FSH, and that's how we can distinguish it from menopause. So our hypothesis then is that self-reported age at menopause might be lower than biochemically confirmed age at menopause, and that this will impact comparisons between women living with and without HIV. So to analyze this, we first looked at comparing self-reported menopause phase to um, determining menopause based on biochemical confirmation with FSH, and then also to look at the mean age at menopause in women living with and without HIV, first by self-report, and then by biochemical confirmation of menopause status. We did this by looking at data from both women living with and without HIV in two Canadian cohort studies, BCC3 and KARMA. We looked at women who are sex assigned female at birth and at least 35 years old with no hysterectomy or bilateral oophorectomy and who weren't currently taking any hormone contraceptive or menopause hormone therapy, which would affect FSH levels. We determine menopause status in two ways. So the first is self-report, asking women, how would you describe your current menstrual status? And then the second is based on biochemical confirmation, which is based on the self-reported age at the last menstrual period and serum FSH levels. And based on biochemical confirmation, we define menopause as no periods for at least a year, a high FSH, or being at least 60 years old, as well as if women were over 55 and had no periods for a year and had a high body mass index, we also considered them to be uh, in menopause. And that's because um, estrogen production by adipose tissue could affect FSH levels. 
So we hope to have 84 women in each group to have a sufficient power to detect a two-year difference in age at menopause. So we're currently underpowered for this. And um, so all the analyses I present are preliminary. First, our participants were similar with respect to age, ethnicity, substance use history, age at menarche, and body mass index. And most of the women living with HIV had an undetectable viral load at the time of the study. Our women living with HIV and HIV negative women were different uh, with respect to income, education, parity, and having a history of hepatitis C. Then looking at reproductive phase, when we asked women if they were uh, to self-report their reproductive phase, in a, women living with HIV, 65 said that they were in menopause. However, when we look at hormone levels, this was only confirmed in 54 of those women. When we look at HIV negative women, there's much more concordance between self-report and biochemical confirmation. And indeed there was about an 86% concordance in women living with HIV, but a 99% concordance in HIV negative women. Then when we go to looking at age at menopause, first, when we look at self-report, it looks like women living with HIV had a younger age at menopause by about two years, similar to what others have reported. However, when we look again at FSH levels, we see that there really was a very little difference in age at menopause, uh, and this was not statistically significant at the time of this analysis. So uh, our analyses are currently underpowered, as I've mentioned several times, and we are relying on self-report uh, for looking at the age of the last menstrual period. And of course, using FSH levels, we can only account for hypothalamic amenorrhea. Uh, we can't rule out other reasons that someone's periods might have stopped. However, based on this preliminary data, it looks like there might be very little difference in age at menopause and women living with and without HIV when we look at hormone levels. And FSH levels might be very valuable in determining age at menopause, especially in a population with a high incidence of hypothalamic amenorrhea. I also think it's very important to discuss menopause and reproductive uh, phases with women so that they're aware of this, as well as uh, most importantly, to distinguish what kind of treatment someone should have, which does differ depending on whether or not they're in menopause or if they're experiencing another reason that their periods have stopped. With that, I'd like to very gratefully thank my team, our funding sources, as well as all of the participants without whom this research wouldn't be possible, and to this uh, conference for having me here today. Thank you.